while street life has all but disappeared in many cities and towns across Sierra Leone. It's day two of a three-day lockdown implemented to help stop the spread of the Ebola virus. Health workers are distributing soap and information about the disease, and they're marking each doorway with chalk when they leave. The officials are also looking for infected people who may be going untreated. The lockdown affects about 6 million people overall. While well, reports are surfacing that some residents have fled their homes to avoid being trapped in that lockdown. But the country's leaders say it has been a huge success. Earlier, we spoke to Sierra Leone's information minister, Alpha Kanu. He dismissed concerns that the lockdown might force people infected with Ebola to go underground. What we have seen so far, that is between yesterday and today, we have seen more cases of people who have been affected, more cases of fear that they may have been infected, coming out voluntarily, and some have been discovered in their homes where they had been hidden by their relatives. And uh, that number in totality surpasses every, all the, the, the aggregate of people that have been coming out since the last past one month. So I cannot see how that could have driven more people underground. If anything, it has brought out more people so that we are able to give them help, we are able to counsel them, and also tell them this is a disease that can be managed. And we are finding ways of doing that. So that is Sierra Leone's Information Minister, Alpha Kanu. Our next guest has been able to travel around Freetown during this lockdown. Stephen Douglas is a Canadian media development consultant who lived in Sierra Leone for the last five years. He has a government-issued press pass, and he does not have to stay under lockdown, and he joins us now from Freetown. So, Stephen, uh, you just heard from Sierra Leone's Minister of Information. Uh, we spoke with him last hour. He says the lockdown is a success so far. You've been out in the streets today. What's your take? Uh, good evening, Christine. Um, I think if you measure success by the number of homes visited, the number of people coming forward, and the number of, of bodies being found um, suspected of Ebola, I think it is a, has been a success. People are obeying the, the stay-at-home orders and the lockdown and the house-to-house the -house sensitization. And, and I think it's, it's actually going quite well. Now, quite well, I think, is dependent upon a number of variables. The, the idea of yesterday, there were 22 bodies found in Freetown um, suspected of Ebola deaths. And uh, today, the numbers are, are rising substantially. So, uh, yes, it's been a success in that we're finding more bodies, we are finding more sick people, um, and people are staying in. Uh, whether it will help control or eliminate or prevent further uh, infections of the Ebola virus, um, that's left to be to the unknown. Stephen, you've been, as I mentioned, living in Sierra Leone for the last five years, and uh, I'd and say you've never experienced anything like this, I'd imagine. How have you, or have you at all, been personally affected by the Ebola outbreak? Well, my, my street has been quarantined. Um, several houses at the very end of the street are under surveillance for under quarantine um, because of a resident of the neighborhood had died in, the, in an open field. So I, I have had to, to move out of my house for a little while. Um, the quarantine will last 21 days, and uh, I'm not sure what will happen afterwards. But I, I have had friends uh, who are nurses who have died um, and, and sur who survived the quarantine process. Um, so it is a very personal disease. I, I can say this is a very small country and where lots of people are related and know each other. And I, I can say that I think every Sierra Leonean has been touched by this virus in one way or another. Yeah, I think that's really, it's, it's good the way that you put it there. It's a very personal disease. And I wonder, how are people feeling about this lockdown? No one can come in or out of their homes. Do, do people there think it's helping? Uh, I, I think reaction from, from the ground is very mixed. Um, certainly some people are, are feeling quite uh, uneasy about it. Um, people live tend to live hand to mouth here day to day, and those um, those uh, are are people who are really suffering 
we can't store food very well. We don't have power a lot and we don't have refrigerators. So it's difficult to store food. So that is a real concern. And, and, and people today are starting to grumble and complain about having to stay in. Um, and on the other hand, people are really coming together in a very united way, I think for the, probably the first time in history in this country, um, to, to stand up and to what they're calling fight the campaign to rid the country of Ebola. Stephen, uh, U.S. President Obama has pledged $500 million and 3,000 troops to help fight Ebola. Is, is, do people have a sense that this can be contained and that will be enough? Uh, I, I think the people, on, again, on the ground are very optimistic. Um, they have lost a lot of faith in the systems here, in the healthcare system and the education system, for sure. But I think there is a united move to, um, to fight this disease. And I think people, are, people know that this too will pass. And other, other calamities, other tragedies and other problems have passed and Sierra Leone has survived. I think most people feel that Sierra Leone will survive this. It's just a matter of, of getting down to business, getting people's hands dirty and, and getting on with the fight against the disease. We've all been told that uh, we can prevent it, we can contain it, we can treat it. And I think people are, are hopeful anyway. They're, they're very hopeful that we will eventually come out of this. Well, Stephen, it is good to hear that people there are hopeful. I want to thank you for sharing your unique perspective there with us, Stephen. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Christine. Stephen Douglas is a Canadian media development consultant and journalist. He was speaking to us from Freetown.